Nintendo just did something so unexpected. I didn't even know they had it in them. So as we know, Nintendo usually has these showcases that they call directs, and they're usually really hype. They have the vibe, a good narrator, Arr! A swashbuckling adventure returns! And since the Switch came out, they've been showing a lot of exciting new titles, remakes, ports, and updates almost back to back. But the gaps between these directs started getting really long. There was a 204 day gap between the last one in 2019 and the one in 2020. And to fill these gaps, Nintendo started introducing indie game showcases and partner showcases. Partner showcases meaning they show third party games. I enjoyed the indie showcases because we get things like Deltarune and Silksong. But those partner showcases are something else. There's no feeling like when you're eagerly and patiently waiting for more information on Breath of the Wild 2, Bayonetta 3, and possibly Metroid Prime Trilogy, and then seeing... Welcome to WWE Action! I never enjoyed a single partner showcase, but this last one changed everything. I almost just didn't sit down for it, but decided to give it a shot anyways. And I was glad I did, because it was jam-packed. The most exciting part for me, and I think many others, was Persona 5 Royal coming to Switch. Well actually, Persona 3 and 4 Golden are releasing as well. But Persona 5 was the most exciting for me, because I was having the time of my life with it. But I stopped playing it about 30 hours in, because I found it really difficult to play the sort of dialogue heavy slice of life game on the living room playstation at 10pm every night. It just didn't feel like the ideal way to experience the game. So I gave it a break and decided to wait for a Switch port. And what do we get? Joker for Smash? And Persona 5 S? Is that Persona 5 Switch? No! Actually, I think Scramble is pretty sick. But how can you release Joker for Smash? And the sequel to the game on Switch before you even release the first one? Who said that was an okay thing to do? But we finally got it. And it's such a big deal for the same reason all Switch ports are a big deal. Because it's on a Switch. You can play your game wherever and whenever you want spontaneously without turning on and off your system and TV, which is perfect for a slice of life type game such as Persona, where I'd rather play it in like 15 to 30 minute chunks throughout the day. The crazy thing about this partner showcase is that Persona wasn't the only exciting announcement. Another Sunbreak trailer of course, but we're also getting a Nier Automata? Nier Automata. No, Automata. Automata. No, here, look. Automata. Automata. At this point, Platinum Games is just going mayhem on the Switch. There's also the Portal Collection, a new creepy game by the people who made Sayonara Wild Hearts. Block looks really interesting as well, and I always enjoy a good co-op play. The new Mario and Rabbids looks like a lot of fun with this free movement and attack hybrid system. Except those Rabbids Rosalina stars are a little unsettling. And I've heard good things about the Monkey Island games. And what's that? An actually good Sonic Frontiers trailer? Unbelievable. I was really skeptical about how Frontiers will look and run on Switch, but this at least clears the looks aspect of it. Graphics definitely look worse than whatever system they showed the other trailers in, but still looks good. And to finish up, a Square remake and No Man's Sky. I never played No Man's Sky, but it definitely seems more tempting now because I feel like this sort of exploration game would be great on a portable device. So yeah, that partner showcase really proved me wrong. I know it's not entirely up to Nintendo whether the lineup is good or not, but just knowing a lineup like this is even possible makes me really excited for more future directs. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, press the like button and subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, and good night.